everybody. New year, new blog. All right. My name is Derek Osborne. Some of you may know me as Angelic One. Now, welcome to my office and episode one of the Throne of Angels video blog, take 27. The microphone, my voice, they don't get along so well. So I've had to record this over and over. I've had to do a lot of tests. In the last take, my wife came in and interrupted me and well, y'all know how that goes, I'm sure. If you're married or have a girlfriend or boyfriend or significant other or parents, somebody, yep, interrupted. It interrupted again, again. Anyways, all right, so on to things. Like I said, welcome to the first episode of Throne of Angels video blog. What is this all about? Well, first off, let me introduce myself. Again, like I said, my name is Derek Osborne. I've been in this wonderful hobby for a long time now. I started back in the early 80s with some Dungeons and Dragons. Picked up Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader, I believe the month it was published, if not the month, but right after, in a box of 30 plastic Space Marines for 20 bucks. Oh man, those days were good. They were really good. So, what is this? Another video blog about gaming? The miniature hobby? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. I'm stepping it up. Taking my blog, which I'm horrible at updating, and I really have like lots of great information and insight and um, well, inside information a lot of times that, uh, that, you know, I'm really bad at upkeeping and, and putting on my blog. So, uh, I video blog like crazy when I was going to school and I find that I do that really, really well. So be looking forward to bi-weekly updates for the Throne of Angels video blog. Got a few things written down here that I'm going to go over. Last decade, I have actually been an external playtest lead for uh, one of the larger companies out there, um, as well as a couple of the smaller companies out there. That's what uh, kind of gets me my little inside info every once in a while. Um, so hopefully we can uh, get some some of that here for you guys. So, well, um, you know, currently I'm employed in the video game industry as a lead animator for a small video game company in uh, Eugene, Oregon. Outside of that, I think I've covered the all about me part. Um, now, what can you expect from this blog? Well, you know, other than bad lighting, because well, the lighting in here is not great, uh, it's set up for me in my, this is my paint desk over there, set up for that. Uh, you're going to get the random slip up, like the wife walking in, you know, I mean, I'll edit that out possibly, or maybe not, who knows. Uh, you know, the occasional visit from the dog, I definitely will not edit that out because he's just cool, right? If you got a dog, you know what I'm talking about. If you got a cat, you know what I'm talking about, right? Pets are cool, right? Pets are cool. They can be on my blog. Pets can be on the blog, period. All right, so purpose of this. Um, I am, quite honestly, a hobbyist first, gamer second, but uh, I like the smaller skirmish games, right? I like to be able to um, complete an army. <laughs> so, yeah, I played 40K for a long time. I played Fantasy for a long time. The huge armies, I never, ever, I don't think I finished painting a single one, quite honestly, in um, at least a decade or 15 years of playing those games. So, um, small skirmish games, dude, I can I can build and convert the heck out of and paint and complete and put it on the table, and it's awesome. And that, to me, is um, the, the big draw to skirmish games. So, we're going to feature smaller games. And uh, independent companies who produce outstanding models uh, that I think you all should see. So that's that's part one. I'm going to review some products, right? I've got uh, miniatures on my desk and, uh, you know, paints on my desk and paintbrushes on my desk and uh, all sorts of other random stuff on my desk or things that will cross my desk that we'll take a look at, right? We'll review miniatures, paints, um, again, random. Hey, look, I've got it written right here. Random things associated with the hobby. Painting and hobby tips. Everybody has something to share. Everybody has a technique, right? On top of that, you may just be starting out. If you're just starting out, you got a guy with 20 some odd years of experience. Man, I'm old. So anyways, uh, you know, you can tap me for knowledge, right? All right. Oh, contest. Yes, contest. Who doesn't like contests? I love contests. And I get cool stuff all the time. And and I'll tell you what, it might be a painting contest, might be a conversion contest. We might do some fiction, or we might play some bingo. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Contests. They're on here. Random giveaways. That's right. Follow the blog. Video or written or both, or, you know, I doubt I'll do a Facebook page. But, anyways, follow it. And 
every once in a while, I'll pull a name out of the hat and, and I'll send you something, either from my own personal collection or something a company sends me. You know, I get a lot of love from a lot of random places. I'm going to pass that on to you guys, to, to the viewers, to the followers. Um, you know, there might be two of you right now, uh, but I expect it to grow, right? So get in early. Your chances to win something are probably better earlier than they will be later. Gaming and strategy tips. I've been gaming for a long time. Being a lead play tester, I have broken my fair share of rules. I've written my fair share of rules. Uh, everybody can use strategy tips, right? I get them from other people. Um, I qualified for nationals for for War Machine at Gen Con. I, you know, I mean, there was there was a couple things that happened like back in the history of the day, and this was a long time ago. But I mean, it's happened, right? I mean, I, I I've made my mark. No, I'm just kidding. I haven't made any marks. Um, special guests. I know a lot of people in the industry. And either through Skype or, you know, maybe in the office, I might get some people here. Look, there's my random, that random interruption. Uh, the five-year-old's coming in. So, special guest right there. See what I'm talking about? How? That was on cue. So awesome. So special guests uh, from the industry next time, probably. Uh, people who are artists, um, producers, uh, rule writers. Just all sorts of awesome random people I can get on my blog. Hopefully that will lead to some exclusive leaks, right? Maybe some early stuff, something that you guys want to see or something that, that you may not know that we get our hands on early. That would be awesome. That would be cool. Shh, don't tell them. All right. Special requests. You guys would be able to, you know, throw requests up on the blog and say, hey, I want you to review this item or I want you to talk about this. Give me your thoughts. Or, hey, I'm having a problem with this. Uh, do you know anything about it? I will do my best to help out uh, with a special request. All right, so now that you know what to expect, now you know what to expect because I went over the list, what's on the menu for today. Today we're going to talk about how to make how to make the perfect omelet. Dude, righteous garbage. Uh, actually, today we're going to do some unboxing, right? We're going to unbox a few items that I got uh, set up over here, and we're going to have some fun. We're going to take a look at the re-release of the Dark Age uh, starter box. We're actually going to Dragiri today. We'll be going through all five of the new starter boxes over the next couple of weeks. Today we're going to look at Dragiri and a couple of other models. Uh, we're going to look at Cool Mini or Not's newest release, the Frightmare. So let's jump over to the painting desk and take a look. All right, here we are at the painting desk. So with the re-release of Dark Age Apocalypse, we're going to look at uh, what I'm going to start as my first warband. Basically, I'm going to start an air cast uh, Dragiri Warband and uh, go from there. So today we're going to unbox the Arbiter of Balance. We're going to take a look at the Dragiri Warband and then, of course, the Frightmare. Uh, limited edition Simon model by one of my favorite sculptors. So, uh, let's get to it. The Arbiter of Balance. Bad lighting. Let me see better back here. Yeah, all right. So, typical blister pack, right? Right. All right, in the back we've got obviously your stack card. You're not gonna be able to see that very well, so we'll go over that a little bit later. 40 millimeter base. Woo! These excite me. I like 40 millimeters. Why? No reason. All right, so there we go. Single piece model. Uh, she's large, right? Um, <laughs> stick her up to the light, and you can't see her. So uh, yeah, we're going to get a close up on this one, uh, a different camera shot, and I'll show you her in a second but uh, just upon first review I'm taking a look uh, really basically fairly close at where I would think that I should see flash and mold lines and I'll be honest with you this is a very clean sculpt I'm gonna have to do very 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 minimal cleanup maybe just a little bit in the edges of the fan blades up here um, but for the most part it's it is gonna be a very very clean very easy cleanup or very easy model to clean up now um, that's her inner base. I did grab a couple of models for size comparison. I've got a, a Grey Knight Terminator there. This is a Tau Pathfinder. The War Machine crowd will recognize this as a Nephilim Soldier. And then the Almighty Spring and War Jack, which is on a 50 millimeter base. Alright, so. Uh, there's your size comparison. Um, you know, again, we'll get some close-ups of her here in a second, and uh, we'll move on to the Dragiri Warband and see what we got in the box. All right, up next, the Dragiri Warband. Exacto knife, 
Remember, always cut away from yourself. So, uh, you know, I actually like full color printed boxes, uh, but even boxes with sleeves are cool. So uh, we're looking at standard box. Everything is packed in a plastic bag. So those are all of our figures and our cards and bases in that one. And then packing peanuts. Everybody loves packing peanuts. They're so tasty. All right, so let's take a look. Staple bag as we peel everything out and we're just going to dump it on the old protective surface. All right. Holy cow, this guy is huge. All right, so it comes with a Soul Warden. The Soul Warden is the uh, the big guy in the box. And when I say big guy, I mean big guy. He uh, he obviously is on a 50 millimeter base, so we'll compare him to another 50 millimeter model. Uh, we'll get some close-ups of this, but basically uh, what we're looking at there, again, the Spriggan from Privateer Press. I'm going to pull the uh, 50 millimeter base out of the bag here right quick. And uh, we're going to stick them in the back side just so we can have a stand-up comparison. Basically next to that. As you can see, the model is no joke. That thing is monstrous. Um, Two-handed axe. Easily the same size as the Spriggan's Lance. So, yeah, that's a phenomenally sized model. That thing is absolutely huge. That's his head. His head's like, he's got like a, a big, I don't know. I think he's a lodge leader. He's actually he's a soul warden. He's a soul warden. So he has to have the hat. Um, then we are looking at a ton of slaves and a ton of parts. And unfortunately, like everybody that comes with spears, we have a couple of bends here and there. Easy to straighten out. Maybe we'll uh, do a tutorial a little later on on uh, the best way to straighten or even replace with brass rods. But for the most part, the bends, not too bad, not too bad, so I'm not terribly disappointed there. The arms, I am going to say, they require a little bit of cleanup. Unlike the uh, Arbiter, there is a little bit of flash and mold lines on some of these. Nothing terrible, nothing terrible. So it'll take me a couple, two, three minutes to do a little cleanup. A friend of mine says, when it comes to miniatures, remember the ABCs. Always be cleaning. Always be cleaning. So basically when you have some spare time or sitting around doing nothing, take a handful of miniatures and a file with you or even exacto knife. Again, minimal minimal mold lines that I'm seeing here on these. We'll get some close-ups. I believe this is the uh, Taskmaster slash slave driver. Yeah, because that's the uh, that's the old whip hand there. Yeah, so he's a little larger than the others, obviously. We'll uh We'll take a, a close-up look at those here in a second. But for the most part, let me see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I need to recount because I think I counted one guy once and another guy twice and who, I don't know. All right, so we're looking at 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15 models. 15 models in the starter box for 60 bucks. That is a bargain, and I'm telling you, it's a bargain. All right, so we'll get some close-ups of some of these here in a second. And then we'll move on to the Frightmare. I'm excited to see that one. Terribly excited to see that one. All right, and finally we have the Frightmare. Uh, it comes in the same style blister as uh, all the rest of the Seamon stuff I've ever gotten. 40 millimeter race. Woo! Love me the 40 millimeter. All right, remember, excitement over everything. It's really that awesome. Okay, so this is a piece that was done by Aragorn Marks, who is uh, arguably one of my favorite sculptors. He's done a lot of the, uh, or he did a lot of the, the early confrontation stuff that I really, really dug and fell in love with. Um, and the stuff that he's doing now, uh, I think is phenomenal. Works for Games Workshop. Shout out to Aragorn. Oh, your stuff is awesome. Uh, plus, he's actually a pretty nice guy. All right, so two-piece resin model. Really simple. Obviously, uh, a couple of things that I need to clip off here, but I will show you uh, up close and personal here in just a second. Um, I'm not seeing any bubbles. I'm not seeing any, uh, you know, really terrible flash. A little bit between the legs. Again, I'll show you that here in a second, but again, I'm not finding any, any real pits or bubbles or problems, things that uh, I typically would associate uh, 
or C uh, being problematic. A eh, little bit of something on the back, but uh, you know, it's in an area that I don't think is that big of a deal. But again, not not anything that's that's terrible. So, how does he stand up? Forty millimeter base. So I've got the Druin Minotaur, which is another piece that Aragorn did. He is roughly the same size as the Druin Minotaur, about the same size. Um, arms are a little bit bigger, but uh, yeah, size quality, there you go, right? There's another one of my favorite Minotaurs, not by Aragorn, but uh, we'll get you a close-up uh, side-by-side side of those guys here in a second, too. So, that's the, uh, the unboxing. Let's get some close-ups. All right, first up, the Arbiter of Balance. As you can see, single piece model, 40 millimeter base. We're going to take a look at, again, what I would expect or where I would expect to find some mold lines. I would expect to find them typically down the sides of the model. As you can see, no mold lines, nothing along the back. Very, very clean model. Again, ultimately, the only thing that I expect to do any cleanup on is those areas of the fan, basically right there. I gave this one a good, quick, thorough once over. And uh, I am very, very impressed with this model. So one piece, 40 millimeter, outstanding mold quality. Okay, so here we have a close-up, or what will be a close-up shot of the Scarred Slaves that come in the Dragiri Warband. As you can see, we have a number of multiple poses. We've got uh, one here, one here, one here, and one here. So we're looking at four different poses. Make that five different poses. These guys are actually slightly different than these guys. Um, so we've got five different poses. Obviously, that's a huge amount of variety in a uh, in a single warband box. So we're going to take a close look at uh, at this guy here. Again, looking for for mold lines or flash. Doesn't like the fact that I got something behind it. Oh, the camera! Mold lines and flash. Well, how about if we move these guys out of the way? There we go. Alright, so as you can see, we a little flash at the ankle. And this, I just picked up a random guy. Nothing, uh, I didn't take a look at these guys earlier or anything. I just went and did a quick once over like you saw in the, in the unboxing. But as you can see, not a huge amount of cleanup is going to be required on this guy either. So, you know, we're looking at that little piece of mold flash right there. You know, obviously we got a little, this is the Taskmaster. We've got a little venting to take care of here, basically at the hand. But outside of that, again, I'm not seeing a huge amount of cleanup needed or, or required for this model. So we'll take a look at the Soul Warden in a little bit uh, closer vein as well. And again, looking just simply for mold lines or things that I need to clean up, problems or even bad casting. And uh, I have been actually privy to a few castings that are actually really poor. I've also been in a foundry and have been shown the process of casting. So, again, a little bit of cleanup along the bottom, some flashing, basically some vent channel cleanup stuff. Mainly that's it. I'm not seeing anything in regards to a whole lot of flash or a whole lot of mold lines to clean up. Again, very positive uh, outlook on this model for very little early cleanup work. Very, very impressed. Very, very impressed. So let's take a look at Frightmare. All right, so here we go. Close up of the Frightmare. Fantastic little Minotaur. I really, really like this piece. So again, I gave it a good once over. Here's your flash. Basically the only flash that I'm finding on this model is down there at the legs. That's it. And for a resin model that's pretty solid. Again, those are the only pits that I really found. The backside under the skulls, you can see them there. Nothing uh, nothing too difficult to clean up with some putty. But overall we're looking at a very very solid cast. Again, I'm very pleased overall with all of these models in regards to cast quality. This one again, Aragorn fanboy, so I am just totally impressed and I totally love the musculature of this model. I totally love pretty much everything about it. 
very very happy with this uh, with this purchase. Very pleased with uh, with how it came out. Again, no pitting, no marks. Um, clean up on this is going to be very very simple. Obviously, I've got a couple of pins off the top to uh, to cut and then uh, you know file down. But for the most part, I am at a whole not disappointed in what I'm seeing here. Outstanding sculpting outstanding casting alright there he is the Frightmare hope you guys found this uh, unboxing I don't know educational or at least semi entertaining alright so that's what we got for this week next time we'll be looking at uh, one of the other maybe even two of the other dark age boxes so if you guys have any special requests, shoot me a message, give me some comments, what you liked, what you didn't like, what you'd like to see, what you wouldn't like to see. And uh, other than that, thank you very much for joining me. I will talk to you soon.